had lost during um and we definitely wanted to keep those costs at bay for our clients we didn't want them having to pay these high premiums to have a provider come to work or anything like that um we had to put different policies in place you know putting caps on flights, putting caps on car rentals, things like that, to help make sure that our clients knew how important our relationship was with them. And so with that, we started looking into other options and trying to find a platform that helped us with that. Oh, Shandy, I see your hands raised. Oh, sorry. And so we wanted to make sure that we were you know, getting getting different policies in place for that, but as well as we were seeing a lot of policies change on the travel platforms as well. We were seeing refunds being very limited. We were seeing less than 24 hours for a refund. And in this industry, as you know, it is going to definitely, you, you have a window where you book a travel and, and a provider may no longer be available for a shift or a client may no longer need that provider for that time. So being able to get those refunds in a timely manner, as well as not having large fees for refunds was something that we also were looking at. That's when we knew it was definitely time for a change. We definitely needed to explore other solutions and potential platforms that helped us track those, helped us, you know, keep the cost at bay. Um, that is when our vice pre our president and our co-founder, Jeff Shaw, went to a NALTO convention and he actually met Italite. He came back and had great things to say, said that personality was great, um, energy was high, and that I should definitely reach out. So that's when I, I reached out and we started going over the platform, having different conversations, several different demos to where I needed, a I had a lot of questions. I had a lot of concerns. I had a lot of, based on what our travel had been going like for the last couple of years, you know, post COVID is what I would like to say. And different things that we needed definitely met. Um, Italite definitely came with the answers for that and solutions. And when and, and we partnered, we it wasn't it wasn't like they told me, here's what you need to do and here's how we would do it. We partnered on the solutions and definitely understood what was best for our agency um, and moving forward with Italite. Got it. Um, and and I think this perspective is very interesting. I think just to build on a couple of points you mentioned uh, for our audience to know the prices of an uh, of an average flight ticket have gone up by almost 20% between 2022 to 2024. So the price increase that Donna, Donna was speaking about is real. As we delight, we keep tracking how, uh, how flight and hotel prices are moving. And a lot of this is happening despite, uh, you know, despite crude going down. So, Flight prices have always worked very closely or linked very closely with the price of crude or petroleum or gas for, for that matter. But now there is a disconnect between the two. And I'm sure some of our audience is also observing the same Donna. All right. You know, um, you mentioned you chose Italite because it was time for a change. What were the, you know, what were the key things that appealed to you when you looked at Italite as a platform? Some of the key things that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, some of the key things that we were definitely looking at when we were looking for a platform was we needed some some support. Um, we have a travel department, but as anybody knows, we would not want our travel department working 24-7, 365. That was something that it like did offer. They offered us a 24-7, 365 communication um, for agencies and providers. So meaning in the moment issues, if a flight's delayed or anything like that, 2 a.m., our travel team is not being called at 2 a.m. to help the provider figure out where to go, what to do, um, how to get a flight to be able to get to their location on time. They're able to reach out 
to Italite as well with a phone number. Um, they have a platform as well that they can use, email, multiple different ways to contact Italite, as well as they can also contact us. And even in the moment, if they were the provider was to contact us, we could contact Italite, go right back to sleep. It, we would know that it would be handled. That 24 seven was something that really spoke to us because nobody wants to be woke up at 2 a.m. And, and have to work on travel and try to understand what was going on and all the issues. Um, another thing was kind of a one-stop shop. We really wanted one platform where we could do everything. As I spoke about prior was we were going through booking online for the flight. We were booking the car through a platform. We were booking the hotel through a platform or directly which um, was was hard because we had once again we had the we had to do all the tracking we had to do the credit card authorization all of those things that is very time consuming when you were booking at, you know x amount of providers per month it's very time consuming um, when when on the twenty four seven I want I want to kind of backtrack a little bit for the twenty four seven support because that was something that definitely you know like I said spoke to us was we are able say it's real time, it's during the day, still the, the travel uh, coordinator is working, they're still able to message it like via chat versus sending an email or trying to leave a message, have a call back, anything like that. We're able to get that chat message right then and there and get our issues resolved very timely versus having to wait and have the provider wait for an answer or anything like that. That also comes into play with the cancellations. We're able to cancel via chat. Um, we're able to update anything via chat. It like kind of takes it from there versus us having to call and change anything. You know, if, if a flight is delayed or a flight is missed, we have to change the car rental pickup. We have to do all those things. That using that chat feature gives us the opportunity to just send the message and have peace of mind that it is going to be taken care of. Another aspect I would say that was really big for us was the reporting mechanism. Um, I not only went into looking for a platform for my front end, which is my travel admins, I wanted something for my accounting as well. Um, as we all know, reconciliation is huge. You want to make sure you're getting receipts in a timely manner. You're wanting to make sure that you're able to get reimbursement in a timely manner and have that in a platform as well versus looking at maybe a credit card statement or, you know, a, a three different platform statement. You want it all centralized. Um, and that is something that reports in Italite really shined for us. We saw that you could pull a report, you could filter it multiple different ways, you could pull invoices, you could pull backup for those things, as well as how it kind of centralized in one format to where when you need to send backup, you're able to do so. These are, these are excellent points. And if I may add, um, the the last point that Donna mentioned about the ability to pull invoices and being able to filter them through a variety of ways. About a year and a half ago, I remember working with another healthcare staffing firm and their accounting team, and we were doing a uh, we were doing a user immersion. So we were sitting down with the accounting team and we were trying to just observe how do they do their work. And from there, we realized that they spent a lot of time just going through, uh, or you know, this was not just the accounting team, but the travel team as well. So between the travel team and the accounting team, they were scouring through emails and through different platforms to pull invoices and also pull these invoices one by one. So it meant a lot of good productive hours were spent there. And therefore, that's when, you know, it's, you know, the proverbial bulb went on where, where we said, hey, how do we give our customers an ability to download invoices or reports from one place 
and as they like. So if they want to download the report for one day or one month or any custom dates, right? From 1st to 7th or any dates uh, at all. How do we give that ability inside the platform? So that's the reason, Donna. Uh, thank you to you know your colleagues from the healthcare staffing industry who made this apparent for us and uh, we could build this. Two other points I'd like to make uh, on customer support. As Italite, we offer 24-7 customer support right around the year. We also provide support across three mediums, chat, call, and email. There is a reason we were up. we went for this model. Now, that, that was very simple. As corporate travelers, as healthcare providers, when we interviewed people, we realized most people took flights uh, you know, early in the morning or late in the evening. Right. So which meant that if they ran into an issue, they would typically face the issue, not when, you know, all of us are typically working. A provider, when they, you know, when they reach a new city, could sometimes not even check in until late in the evening. And therefore, from there came the insight that we had to be available 24-7 to, you know, to really make the provider's life easy, to make the travel team's life easy. And from there, create a great travel experience. One additional investment that we have made is to ensure that the response times are short. Now, this is again something that we learned uh, from, a, you know, from a healthcare travel booker, where she said, "Hey, I'm booking directly from the, pro you know, from the airline or the hotel website, and when I have to follow up for something, I'm often on the line for about 15 minutes before I can talk to someone." Right? And those 15 minutes, I just have to sit on the phone and I can't, you know, I can't even drop off the call because I don't know when in those 15 minutes would someone answer my call. So at Italite, what we built today is a 10 second response time. So if you ping us on chat uh, and Nana mentioned that most of the requests today get fulfilled on chat, that's because, you know, you typically get an answer in 10 seconds. And our SLA, right, our promise to answer is under 30 seconds. So you will get a response under 30 seconds. And like Donna said, right, you can just drop your response there and the work will get done. And so, if you don't mind real quick, Anish, yeah. I, I do want to touch base real quick on the, the response time. Because even a couple of weeks ago when we had that the big breach and there was a ton of issues when it came to flights being delayed and everybody was backlogged, things like that. You know, our team was reaching out via chat um, and was still immediately getting those response times back. Even during that high traffic time where I'm, I'm sure Adelaide was very busy getting a lot of chats, emails, calls, things like that, because everybody was concerned about where their providers were. So I, I do appreciate that. So I did want to say thank you. I don't, I don't know if I had actually told you thank you yet about that. So I wanted to bring that up. No, I, I definitely appreciate that. And I remember uh, these are the situations for which support is extremely essential. Uh, I was stuck in Dallas, uh, you know, through a thunderstorm last year. And I remember, you know, the American Airlines counter had a queue to reschedule, which would have, you know, probably been a four four hour long queue. I would have had to stand in that queue for four hours to get my flight rescheduled. And I was able to do that. You know, I also booked through Italy. So I was able to do that in about five minutes um, while, while I was there at the airport. Um, I think the final point I'd love to make is the need for a one-stop platform. Right. And here, you know, Velo Source and Donna in particular are, you know, are pioneers. When we talk to healthcare staffing companies, we know several today continue to book from individual airline or hotel websites, right? Now that approach definitely works. Uh, that approach is still followed by many companies, but the challenge that comes along is when you start accounting for these, right? Then you have to go pull, you know, pull information from several places. That's one challenge with this approach. Second challenge is when a provider reaches out to you for something, right? Then you have to first remember, okay, where did I book this from? Right? Then you have to scour through your emails to figure out, you know, the, you know, the PNR 
or the ticket number and other things. All of this means that your overall time spent on a single booking increases. And that was one of the core driving reasons why we built Italite as a platform where you could book not just hotels, but you could book flights in here, you could book car rentals in here. And if you had a direct billing arrangement with the rental agency, like Donna mentioned up top, you could continue to enjoy those benefits. You could still get direct billing. You did not need to you know, buy, let's say, Italite inventory. You could still benefit from your own tie-ups. All right, um, you know, now let me get to the question that I'm sure a lot of folks in our audience are worried about, which is hotel bookings. For every healthcare staffing company, at least 60% of the travel they book goes towards hotels. Uh, provider experience is most broken when it comes to hotels for multiple reasons. Donna, my question to you is, you know, you at VeloSource have definitely simplified this whole experience. Can you tell our audience more about, you know, what hotel booking experience was like and how did you simplify it? Of course. Yeah, I definitely think so. I think that from the outside looking in, a lot of people that don't do travel think, oh, you just book a flight, you book a car, you move on. That's not necessarily the case when it comes to the locum side of travel. You know, you're you're looking for keeping your provider happy. So keeping them in the nice, the nice hotels, the nicer cars, um, things of that such. But you're also looking for the client to keep cost at bay, to help those rates, things like that. So for travel, I feel like it is an ever, it's it's just a circle. You keep going around and around. So not only did the travel team have to book those things. They were also working on negotiating rates, keeping, making sure that when we did book a hotel, we were, that had maybe a contracted rate with the facility, we were obtaining that rate, which sometimes also became kind of a hassle because maybe the person you were speaking to didn't understand why they had a contracted rate or anybody like that. So then they would have to put in an additional email to have maybe the manager call or um, and kind of speak on those things as well. They could not give us those rates in the moment. Um, so that was a lot of, I would say, front end work prior to even booking the hotel. So doing that was kind of a process. So that was something that also Adelaide stepped in and was like, oh, we, we can do that for you. We can, you, they would run a report, show us our top booked locations, and they would start contracting. One day, I remember I got an email from our account rep and he said, hey, Donna, just by the way, just want to let you know, got you a new rate at this hotel. See you guys have booked there quite a bit the last two months. I didn't even ask for it. I, I was, you know, taken back. I was very appreciative and, and, excited for that. Um, you know, we had given it a light, our contract rates that we had, you know, pre-existing. They got, they met those or even got us better. Don't know how you guys did it, but um, thank you. So those, that was a main pain point when it came to the early on stages. Then we went into what I would say is a huge pain point for everybody probably on this call is the credit card authorization. We had to, once it's booked, you have to send a credit card authorization, filling out all the information. And that's not even the hard part. The hard part is just making sure that the hotels were actually connecting the two, putting that credit card author authorization to that reservation. And then once it's sent over, having to maybe call back, confirm that it was attached. And then even a step forward, because a lot of the times the providers would get to that, that hotel and the person at the front desk would not be able to see that hotel authorization. So that was something that was a big pain point for us and trying to keep, keep the transaction smooth. Um, another, another thing was we were having to, on the back end, even the provider would say, they're still not being able to find it. They're not able to find the, the credit card authorization. They're not, and it was just 
a huge, it was always a back and forth with us and the hotel and trying to find where this credit card authorization was. Typically, we, you know, providers also travel on the weekends. So they would get there and that kind of circles back to my 24 seven, but providers would get there and my travel team would be on the phone with the front desk for a good 25, 35 minutes trying to find this credit card authorization or rescinding it just to be told that the person at the desk at the, is they're currently speaking to is not able to either access that folder or access that email that is being sent to. And that was obviously a problem for us. We did not want our providers having to put a, their personal credit cards down. That is not something that is a service that, you know, we offer them a service. We want to make sure that that service is definitely seen through to the end. So we needed in a platform to have help with that. We needed to make sure that the credit card authorization was going to be something that was a smooth transaction. And it definitely, it definitely was. It was something that Italy took from us without even hesitation and started it. Providers were showing up no issues, no, you know, credit cards are on file, hotels are paid for, no problem. Um, we also, on the back end, then there was no tracking, you know, tracking down of where, who was billed, what was billed. Because at times, even though we were told, yes, the credit card authorization is on file, you know, the provider showed up at 2 a.m., he's not wanting to call, let us know, hey, it's not there just puts their card on file, goes to work, you know, doesn't let us know. So then at the back end comes around, we're trying to connect our dots and we we couldn't find that, you know, what happened, what was going on here. Um, so obviously then we're, you know, calling the provider, needing to track down that receipt to make sure that that provider is getting reimbursed. We did not, that was not something that we wanted to happen. And so with, the credit card authorization, and I want to double down on this because I know that this is something that is everybody that I've spoke to, multiple um, organizations and agencies. From the beginning of time, it has been a problem. We are putting our trust in not our fellow locum agencies or anybody like that. We're putting our trust in the hotels to do their end. And unfortunately, it it had burned us a few times. So we wanted to make sure that these were something that we could get squared away and checked off the list. Another issue we were having, and I know we spoke about it before and I touched base on it just a minute ago was the back end, which is I like to call as you know, like my accounting team and understanding where the charges are and where you know which hotel which which agency we're utilizing and things like that to where we also went with you know they have a, the credit card program here with italite the credit card program also offers us a way to track things on a centralized area the centralized area is also in the platform to where there's just an additional tab no no additional logins um, no tracking anything, no names or anything like that. My accounting team has, you know, all, all the information right there at the tip of their finger, they can get everything. Um, it helps keep down our risk, which is something that credit card authorizations had me always concerned with because we're sending over information that is very delicate and very risky to send when they keep getting misplaced and they're not able to be found or attached to things to where I, I then as you know administratively I'm where to go what how how was it not attached and then so I wanted to keep our risk down as well by doing so that that also helped us with the the Italy credit card program you can adjust the different tabs you can where you have different rates, meaning, and by that, I mean, you can adjust the limits per card. You can assign cards to each individual travel admin or anybody that may be booking travel. 
so the benefits of doing all those things was something that just, it spoke greatly to me when we were looking at Italite. Got it. I'm, I'm sure these are very useful pointers for our audience. To build on what Donna said, the first point around contracting and getting her rates that could delight the health systems that she works with very closely. Uh, at Italite, we have a specialized supplier team that works with hotels, car rental agencies, and airlines to, de to do deals for you. So while we have our own deals, what we do is we also spend time working on your travel data. From that, we come up with insights, you know, just like Donna's account rep did with, hey, Donna, you use this hotel quite a lot. We think here is an opportunity for you to save some money. Now, as a staffing agency, I understand that that money would not, you know, would not remain in my pocket. That is a money I would transfer or that saving is a saving I would transfer to the health system that I'm sending the provider to. However, this is a great place to score a brownie point. And that's exactly what we were able to do for VeloSource on several situations or, or in several situations. So our supplier team would work with the hotel and would already know what's the rate that we want to beat. And because we knew the rate, the rate we wanted to beat through the data analysis, we were able to beat it very often. The other part where our, you know, where our team specializes is with agencies, very often they are booking hospital rates. Right now, when it comes to hospital rates, as Donna mentioned, right, you know, good hotels or cooperative front office teams will always uh, enable you to book those hospital rates. But sometimes if there is a new person, right, or a trainee at the front office, right, or in the reservations team, right, then the process of getting the same hospital rate becomes long, right? It's a productivity drain, but it's, it also means the provider waits for some length of time. You know, through the collaboration between our supplier team and the source travel booking team, we were able to take this work off their plate. Um, so this is a very important capability that we definitely would like to bring to other staffing agencies. Second part, right? And this is the part that I think universally is a challenge for staffing agencies, which is how do you, you know, how do you get that credit card authorization process run smoothly, right? I see that there is a slide on the, you know, on the screen, painful CC authorization process. I can tell you, I've spoken to about 100 uh, staffing agencies over the last two years, and every single one of them believes this is a pain. Why is it a pain? Simply because the four steps involved. Once you make the reservation, first you have to reach out to the hotel to get the credit card authorization form. I can guarantee that process is not simple and that process also can lead to some delays. Then fill that out, send it back, right? Sending it back does not mean it gets attached to the reservation as Donna said, right? So you, you then have to follow up to get the credit card authorization attached to the reservation. And then later, the later comes the third part where you are trying to make sense of the charge on your card. Right. So you thought you made a booking for $149 a night, but seemingly, you know, you've been charged $155 a night. Right. And for that and for reimbursements, we know a lot of agencies collect folios from the hotel as well. So what we did as Italite was we tried to simplify this process in two steps. Number one, you know, have these bookings made on the Italite platform. But second, uh, arm our customers with the Italite credit card. Now, the good part about this credit card was every time a hotel reservation was made on the Italite platform, this credit card would automatically get attached to the reservation as a guarantee card. Right? And we would create mini cards for each hotel. Now, let's look at how this simplified the process further. 
Deb, if you can scroll to the next slide, please. Well, uh, you know, this happened in three ways. First, you know, the pay at property bookings happened. We generated a virtual card that was attached to that reservation. But also second step, this virtual card uh, was converted into a CC authorization form. And that was automatically sent to the hotel. Then we had a, you know, then we had an internal team that would follow up with the hotel to ensure the reservation was authorized. Uh, or sorry, to ensure that the credit card authorization was attached to the reservation. And then because each reservation was mapped to a unique virtual card, the third part, post-checkout reconciliation became easier. And then as Italite, we also offer a, you know, a folio collection service. So we could collect folios for the customer and present it to them inside the platform. Remember, we discussed about invoicing earlier in the conversation, right? So one simple platform, no need to go through emails from each hotel about the folio. You would have folios available in one place. So overall, the idea was to simplify hotel bookings and simplify payment for those hotel bookings using the Italite card. The bonus part of the Italite card was you also get very attractive cash back. Right now, you know, that then directly makes your PNL look healthier as well. All right, um, audience, there are a couple of surprises for Donna. I know she already knows about it since we've been working with her and her team. But let me, um, you know, let me talk you through some of our or two of our newer features that are making life much easier for travel booking teams and for providers as well. So first up is a very, very simple functionality. When a travel booker books on the Italite platform, they're booking for multiple providers. Donna's own team, you know, each person in their team probably has on any given day, five to 10 travelers whose bookings show up on their, uh, on their dashboard. Now, to be able to hone in on a specific provider's uh, uh, on a specific provider's booking was no easy task, right? A while back, when Donna's team was booking from different websites, right? One of the things they had to spend a lot of time on was to go through their mailbox and figure, okay, Doctor John's emails or Doctor John's bookings are on Southwest. Right, but Dr. Adam's bookings are on American. Right now, in the Italite platform, what we've done is provided for a simple search, right, where Donna's team enters the name of the provider. And in a Jiffy, they're able to see all of the open bookings against that provider. Donna, uh, I'd love to get your reaction on, you know, uh, on how the team received this feature. Of course. This is a feature that I can't even explain how excited all teams are, um, front end and back end. So our travel team, they are definitely excited because they're able to easily go in there, type in the provider's name, pull up any type of reservation that they may have, especially in the moment when there is an issue, say, you know, provider missed their flight. We need to hurry up and find out what the next flight is that they can make. It's an easy find quickly um, and it, it's cut and dry. There's no looking over here to kind of find, well, what was the trip ID or what was the dates again? It's going to populate exactly the first one um, at the top of the list. And so this is something for them and finding a reservation quickly, which is typically what we need to do uh, just light years faster. And then for my administrative team in the accounting side, they're really excited about this because there's sometimes that maybe a receipt in the platform doesn't get transitioned to a different platform where we use, you know, for our reconciliation purposes or downloaded or, or say, for instance, if a provider can't find the email with the attachments of their reservations, we can quickly go in there as well and find it without having to know any of the additional information. 
which is huge, um, which is very huge, which is something that I also wanted to touch base on. And I didn't earlier in the segment, but how easy the platform is to use, how user friendly it is. We, we have had plenty of trainings and different conversations but I can honestly say that there have been new team members that have logged in and I'll ask them, well, well how did you do that? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm okay. So, so I do appreciate the, the very user-friendly platform of, you know, front end and back end when it comes to the search feature, especially now. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, and, you know, all I can say is, as a company, uh, our approach is always to understand the challenges that our users and our customers face and then solve them. Uh, you know, Donna, your team has been super kind to, you know, to allow us a look under the hood and in the process, enable us uh, to make life easier for them and for the providers. Definitely. Right now, audience, I promised you two features. I've spoken about one. Now, let me take you to the second one. I know this personally happened because of uh, because of Donna's intervention. So Donna, thank you for it. Um, so as many of you are aware, Assist is a prominent ATS that's used by staffing agencies, especially locum staffing agencies. With Itelite now, we have a light integration with Assist. Now, how does this integration work? Uh, you know, when you onboard a provider, the provider profile gets created on Assist, right? This profile is automatically imported from Assist into the Itelite system, right? And then when a travel booker needs to start the journey, they don't even need to come to Itelite. They just go to Assist, click on the Itelite icon inside of Assist, right? Then uh, they come in, they create you know, the travel request, they make their bookings and they don't have to go back to assist to fill out those details for account managers and customer success managers to know details uh, Details for. Itelite automatically exports that booking information back into assist. So in many ways, right, the, you know, the travel booking team no longer needs to come to Itelite at all. Right, they can operate purely in assist, and that's the reason I know Donna is super excited about this. Donna, I'd love for you to share the context of the you know assist and Itelite integration. Of course, yeah. this is this is this integration is something that I am very excited about. Um, as we spoke about before, we were doing from the beginning, we were doing multiple platforms. Now we're down to two platforms. But with this integration into Assist with Italite, it is going to be one platform. We are not going to have to go to multiple platforms. When it comes to the front end with travel, it's going to push. And we're going to have a push and pull situation where it's, it's in one system. Everybody can see it. We're all kind of on the same page with, with everything, as well as I keep speaking a lot about the the back end um, because I know we all always have the biggest thing is making sure that reconciliation, reimbursement, all of that is also taken care of. And so, although Assist and Italite focused very highly on the travel, they also focused very highly on making sure that expenses were taken care of. So, meaning that. This system is going to tie in the expenses. So it is going to automatically upload those into the assist platform. And there's going to be a lot of flags and, and making sure it's attaching to the correct work week. As we all know, we have to attach those to the work week versus just kind of throwing them out there and, and putting them on an invoice to the client. So just having a one-stop shop for everything from recruitment to credentialing to travel to you know reconciliation purposes and reimbursements it's just something that is kind of light years above what we've all really seen with a lot of the platforms that we've used in the past uh, 
I am glad to hear that. Uh, and for our audience, one of the reasons we've been able to achieve this is because our entire tech brain power sits inside the company. So we build the platform ourselves and whenever we are building a new solution out, the entire work is done by our own team, including you know, each one of our teams, including customer support is with Italite, our Italite employees, right? And that helps us ensure that number one, we bring in, you know, top notch talent, high quality talent for getting work done, but also their work is very cohesive. And therefore, outcomes are good and fast. That said, uh, I think the discussion has been super exciting. Let me leave aside some time for our audience. Let me call in Shadi uh, to take over. Shadi, back to you. All righty. Thank you, Donna and Anish, for those valuable insights. Uh, let's open the, the floor for some questions. Uh, Deb, do we have any questions in the box? Yes, we do have a couple. Um, let me see. So, do you want to go through the questions, uh, Shadi? Uh, sure. Let we me... can begin with Kavi. All righty. So, let's see. We have a few. I see here. First one I see is shifting from manual or semi-manual processes to a fully digital approach is a significant leap. How would you recommend managing the change with your team and the providers to ensure a smooth transition and a successful adoption? Of course. Hi, Molly. Um, thank you for joining us today. And I'd love to answer this question. This was something that I was definitely worried about because, you know, we all get in our habits. We all get used to doing doing our job the same way almost every day. Um, we have seen a lot of different changes through the travel industry as well. So we were very, we were ready for a change. They were ready for a change. You know, they were ready for to stop getting those calls at 2 a.m. or to stop having to fight with a hotel on a credit card authorization. So they all, my whole team was ready. They were excited. Um, you know, I had them also involved in some early conversations so that they could also express their concerns that they had when it came to travel. Um, also help almost give, well, here's what we would like to see. Um, so they felt very into the, the decision to go with Italite. So when we made the decision as a company, it felt as like a collective whole. When we actually started using Italite, we did a very good transition of making sure we did it during like a certain time frame. We, we did it at the beginning of a year, and we made sure that it made sense with our accounting. We made sure that it made sense with travels, you know, providers travel, and we weren't cutting anything up. We made sure that we were also doing it very slowly. Like, I, I think that at first, you know, the first week, first month, we think we had like maybe 10 in there. And just so that way we knew we didn't just go cold turkey. Now, looking back, I'm like, we could have gone cold turkey because we were definitely, it, it was such an easy platform to use. And so we just, it, the transition was pretty smooth for us. I will say there was a lot of, the learning curve for my team was definitely letting go. It was knowing that we could tell it a lot, hey, we need, you know, we need this changed and it was going to be changed. We weren't having to, call back three times to confirm that it was changed or anything like that. So it was more of a let it go. They're, they've got it situation. That must've been challenging. Uh, Callie uh, asked, is VeloSource covering all charges for the providers or just room and tax? We do room and tax. Um, and then any incidentals, you know, the, just as always, the providers always put cards on file, um, anything like that. But those cards, we have not had any cases since Italite where the cards have got swapped to where the card that's on for incidentals where it was charged for room and tax or anything like that. Um, so this this uh, other question, and I'm sorry we can't get to all the questions, uh, but 
uh, our folks at Italite will get back to you and answer any any unanswered questions in this session. Um, this one, the last one that we'll cover today seems to be like a two part question. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, it's uh, for the hotel credit card authorization. Do you use another platform like Wex or Confirma, or do you uh, rely uh, deploy each single use card yourself? Uh, mm -hmm. And then, how do you obtain the hotel folios, and what is your percent of getting them returned back to you? So, so prior to Italite, um, prior to Italite, it was very manual. It was calling on the hotel, sending those doing things of those sorts and also on the back end as well. So calling, needing the folios, you know, and, and tracking those things down with Italite, that's all been kind of X'd out. We do not have to do any of that. Everything is housed in the platform. The credit card authorization, as Anish was saying earlier, is it's, it's almost like it's not there because it's paid for prior to now. So you will, you will never have a provider show up and the credit and the hotel say, there's no credit card authorization. The whole thing is already paid for. Um, I know that probably sounds scary because that that then you think, oh, well, then we can't get reimbursed if the provider doesn't, you know, work the last two days. That's not the case. The case the case is that those days would still be reimbursable or would be refundable, I should say. Um, as long as you reach out in a timely man manner to Italy and tell them, hey, the provider no longer is working that. Thursday, Friday, um, let's go ahead and take that off the reservation. And then you would see an updated charge via all your reporting. Gotcha. Uh, Anish, did you want to add something to that? It looked like you wanted to chime in. Uh, so I think a uh, very important question, um, while we've been able to you know, deliver 100 on 100 folios uh, for Donna's team, it does happen that some hotels may not, you know, may not give folios quickly. What we've realized as we do folio collection is if you run a tight process, if you hit the hotel up with the request to return the folio day of checkout or the next day after checkout, then your success rate increases significantly. I think what I'm trying to say to our audience is today we have a 99% success rate on, fol uh, on folio pickups. And this is because we pick up all the folios within seven days of checkout. Right? And then we have a process if a hotel does not return the folio back within seven days, then we'll, you know, then we have a structured process to go follow up with them. Right. So this is a challenge, I'm sure. Um staffing teams that are today booking hotels directly and trying to collect folios, they face this challenge. So I definitely want to acknowledge the challenge. Right. And uh, this is a challenge that we are actively uh, solving as well. Gotcha. Thank you for that. Um, well, folks, it, it looks like we've come to the end of our session. I, I do want to thank again everyone for attending. Go ahead, Anish. It sounds like uh, you want you got Janice, one more for us. Uh, I think yeah, go for it. We have a couple of minutes more. So I, I yeah. definitely want to pick up, um, you know, Nicole's, you know. Uh, Nicole's oh, yeah. Hey, happy to. I mean. Happy Definitely. to. So here, yeah. here we go. So. Uh, M Nichols. Okay, can can a provider's reward accounts still be applied to reservations such as airfare, hotel, etc.? Uh, and if so, are those reward numbers stored with the provider's travel habits uh, as well? Definitely. So I let I let uh, Donna chime in on this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So this is something that is big, definitely in this industry. Is our you know the providers do want to make sure they are receiving those rewards based on hotel. Um, airfare and car rental, things like that. When it comes to Italy, yes, um, we have never had an issue. Okay, I don't want to say never. We have not had any issue that has not been resolved. If a hotel is pushing back, say for instance, a provider calls us two weeks after checkout, says, "Hey, I noticed my my points did not add for my last you know booking. Can you please check into it?" we then reach out to Italy and they are able to get those rewards added to whatever it may be, whatever platform. With that being said, for, so the second part of the travel, you know, being stored with the travel habits, yes, you can store those in the provider's profile. 
And that's kind of a two part as well. So it it depends like in Italy itself. Yes, you just put it in the the provider's profile and the comment box. You can kind of double down if if you have a specific provider that you want to 100% make sure that it's fully attached. Um, haven't had an issue with anything that has not been resolved. And a lot of times when it when it was an issue on the front end, it's due to the hotel specifically saying that it cannot be added due to maybe we were in a negotiated rate or something like that. Um, but Italy has stood their ground and really fought for us on that. And we've received those points. Now, if, if you're talking about the integration with assist and Italite, same thing. When in assist, when you build that provider's profile and it pushes to Italite, you would be able to store those those reward numbers um, for them to get those points. And to add to what Donna said, uh, in Interlight, we can store up to 15 different you know, loyalty numbers or frequent flyer numbers. And this is not limited to hotel memberships or flight memberships. We are also able to store car rental memberships. Now, I'm sure uh, you know many in our audience have dealt with well-traveled providers. So some of them may even have you know a loyalty membership number with Enterprise or Avis uh, as agencies, as car rental agencies. All of these, when you are in the process of making a booking, show up in a very easy to use way and you can attach it to the reservation right there from the profile, just as Donna said. Right on. We got a response saying, great, thank you. <laughs> All righty. Well, that's all we have for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it uh, and found it useful. If you're looking for a travel partner to make Locum Travel a piece of cake, then Italite will be a perfect match for you. Uh, there'll be a meeting link in the chat box in case you want to block some time with them. Uh, thank you, and I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Take care, everyone. Thank you, thank you guys. And I, I just want to, um, one last thing is I want to make sure that you know, any further questions for any agency that you would like to speak to personally, you know, please let Anish know and I'd be more than happy to, you know, meet with anybody um, individually and go over a little bit more in depth of, you know, our success with Italite. That's great. Thank you. Thanks, thank guys. You for, for doing this, uh, this with us and thank you, Shadi, as well. My pleasure. My pleasure. Have a great thank one, everyone. Have a great one. Bye, Nish. Bye, Deb. Bye.